Previously, we said that if we purify our protein that we want to study and we don't know anything about that protein, then the first step is to basically determine what the composition of amino acids is inside that protein. And that involves determining not only what types of amino acids we have, but also how many of each amino acid we have inside our protein. Now, once we know that information, what is the next logical step? Well, the next step is to basically determine exactly what the order is of our amino acid inside that protein. And what that means is we want to sequence those amino acids inside that protein. Now, what is the first step in sequencing our amino acids? Well, the first step is to basically determine what that first amino acid is in that specific sequence, in that protein. And the procedure that allows us to basically determine what that first amino acid is, is known as the Edmund degradation. Now, to demonstrate how the Edmund degradation actually works, we're going to begin by assuming we know what the sequence of amino acids is. But, in your protein that you're going to be studying, you don't know what that amino acid sequence is. And that's exactly why you want to use the Edmund degradation process. So, in our hypothetical example, we're going to use the same exact protein that we used previously. So, alanine, arginine, phenylalanine, glycine, aspartate, and glycine. So, once again, I give you the exact sequence to basically demonstrate how this procedure works. But normally, you're not going to know the sequence of your proteins. So let's begin with step one. So in the first step of the Edmund degradation, we want to basically label that first amino acid. And the way that we label that first amino acid is by reacting it with a special molecule known as phenylthio or phenylisothiocyanate. Now, the structure of phenylisothiocyanate is this structure here. Now, what's so special about this molecule? Well, it turns out that if you react this molecule with our polypeptide and the alpha amino group does not have a positive charge, then this will react with it to basically form a bond. It will attach to this uncharged terminal alpha amino group. So if we draw the structure of our six amino acid polypeptide, this is what we get. So we have alanine, we have arginine, we have phenylalanine, we have glycine, we have aspartate, and we have glycine. So this is the beginning and this is our end. So if this nitrogen is not charged, then the phenyl isothionate will react with this and bind to it, and this will label it. So the reaction basically forms this product as shown. Now, if you want to know what the reaction mechanism is in this particular reaction, I'll link you above, and you can check that reaction mechanism out. So What's the entire point of step one? Well, we want to label that initial amino acid. Why do we want to label it? Well, because in the second step, what we're going to do is we're going to basically cleave this peptide bond that is holding this alanine amino acid and this arginine amino acid. And by cleaving it, we're going to separate it from the rest of the polypeptide. And once we separate it, we want to have a means of separating this amino acid that was cleaved, that was separated, and the rest of that polypeptide. And that's why we label it with this phenylisothiocyanate molecule. So, once again, the bond that we're about to break or that we want to break is this bond. Now, the difficult question is, how do we break this specific peptide bond and at the same time not break any other of these peptide bonds? So, we want to create a procedure in which we only somehow break this peptide bond here between this first and second amino acid, but at the same time, we want to keep the remaining peptide bonds intact. Well, the way that we can do it is, we can simply take this molecule here and place it under mildly acidic conditions. 
And if we place it under mildly acidic conditions, what happens is this peptide bond will hydrolyze, it will break, it will rearrange. So this entire molecule will rearrange to basically form this molecule here. And this is known as PTH amino acid, where in this particular case, because this amino acid is alanine, then that means this is PTH alanine. If this amino acid was something else, let's say glycine, then this would be PTH glycine and so forth. So in the second step, we were able to break that first peptide bond while keeping the other peptide bonds intact. And so now we have this labeled amino acid, the PTH alanine, and this remaining polypeptide that now consists of five amino acids. And by using a chromatography technique, and because this is labeled, we can separate this and then determine what this amino acid actually is. So the Edmund degradation process is very useful because it gives us a systematic approach to basically cleaving that first peptide bond and no other peptide bonds are cleaved within that polypeptide chain. Now the, uh, the Edmund degradation process is even more useful. How? Well, let's take a look at the following two molecules. So once we isolate this molecule and remove it, we have this peptide bond left. Now we don't know what the sequence is of these other amino acids. And so what we can actually do is if the polypeptide isn't too long as it is in this case, so if it's about 50 amino acids or less, we can actually continue that Edmund degradation process. We can repeat it over and over and over until we get every one of these amino acids. So if we take this five amino acid polypeptide and we repeat the Edmund degradation process again, then we'll be able to remove this amino acid here, which is arginine. So we, we know that this is alanine and then we repeat it a second time and now we know it is arginine. And after we repeat a second time, we're going to get this peptide that contains four amino acids and we continue it over and over until we get all those amino acids. And this is shown in the following diagram. So once we carry out the Edmund degradation process the first time, we can repeat this procedure four more times to basically determine the entire sequence of amino acids. And this is shown here. So this peptide here is this peptide here. So we have uh, arginine, we have phenylalanine, we have glycine, we have aspartate, and we have glycine. So we take this, we mix it with our phenylisothiocyanate, we label it in step one, and in step two we remove it, so we uh, basically form the PTH. Uh, arginine and then we isolate that and determine what that amino acid is and then we take this four membered amino acid polypeptide and then we repeat the Edmund degradation process a third time then a fourth time and a fifth time and at the end we basically know exactly what that sequence of amino acids is in our polypeptide chain so this process is a very, very useful process because it gives us a systematic approach to cleaving a specific peptide bond and thereby determining exactly what that sequence is. Now, the Edmund degradation process is only useful up to a certain size of that protein. For instance, if our number of amino acids is, let's say, 1,000, this is not a very useful process. And we'll see exactly why in the next lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to see how we can basically determine the sequence of amino acids of larger proteins. So the Edmund degradation process usually works on those proteins that are about 50 amino acids in length or less.